So today we'll again get back to our words of scholars. So let's start with the word prudent. So prudent means to act with care and thought for the future. So again, a prudent person is somebody who makes decisions while thinking about the future and the consequences of his decision on the various people involved. So we often use this term in conjunction with a prudent financial manager or a prudent manager of a bank and something like that. So it's often used in conjunction with financial sector. But we can also use it in terms of uh, scholarly work. So let us create a sentence out of this. A prudent researcher should back up his computer data regularly. So again, this is a good use of the word prudent because you need to keep the fact in mind that you may lose your data and so you need to constantly be showing care and thought for the future. Now the next word on my list is pithy. Pithy, P-I-T-H-Y and pithy means terse and succinct in expression. So essentially when we talk of pithy sayings we mean proverbs or aphorisms which are short and concise. So let's create a sentence out of this. Dr. Rao used pithy comments such as nothing ventured, nothing gained to motivate the students in his class. So again, any such proverb or small phrase would be called a pithy saying. The next word on my list is didactic. And didactic essentially means something which wants to teach or somebody who wants to teach or something which tries to teach somebody. And this teaching has a particular connotation in the sense that there is a moral factor to this teaching. So didactic is often used to convey this particular factor. Now one more word on my list is idiosyncrasy and this is a mode of behavior or thought peculiar to a person. So again this is a particular pattern of behavior which may be specific to a particular person and this is symptomatic of eccentric behavior on the part of this person. So let's create a sentence out of these two words. So I have a sentence here Professor Smith showed idiosyncratic behavior of going into a didactic monologue at the end of his physics lectures on the foibles of Gen Z students. So essentially many scholars have certain peculiar behaviors which you can classify using this particular word. Now the next word on my list is extant, that is E-X-T-A-N-T. And this is something which means it is still surviving or in existence. So something which is uh, extant is essentially something which is still surviving and has not been wiped out or decimated. So let us create a sentence out of this word. So a sentence could be, despite the tremendous progress we have seen in numerical methods, the Frobenius method remains extant as a source of benchmark solutions. So again, to be extant is to have survived. The next word on my list is plausible. And plausible means something which is reasonable or probable. So I'll make a sentence out of this. The only plausible explanation of the experimental results was that we were looking at a new life form. So again, when 
various different explanations have been removed for a certain phenomena, the one remaining is the essential plausible explanation. Now the next sentence on my list uses the word esoteric. And this word basically means something which is likely to be understood by a very small number of people with a specialized knowledge. So let's create a sentence out of this. Kundu used the esoteric Lee group theory method to find closed form solutions for rotating beams. So again, this is a word similar to recondite or abstruse, which you can use in these circumstances. The next word on my list is obscure, and it is something which is not discovered or known, something which is uncertain. So I'll create a sentence out of obscure. The disease was caused by an obscure virus. So again, this is a good use of this particular word. Now, one more word on my list is venerate, V-E-N-E-R-A-T-E. -E -E. And venerate means to regard with great respect or to revere. One more word I have is iconoclast. That's I-C-O-N-O-C-L-A-S-T. And this is a person who challenges beliefs and institutions or challenges beliefs or institutions. So let's make a sentence out of these two particular words. A good researcher should respect but not venerate prior research. He should be somewhat of an iconoclast. So again, that is a possible use of the word venerate as well as uh, iconoclast. So you can use these in sentences in future. So again, I hope this video was useful to you and stay tuned to my channel for more discussion on words to lift your vocabulary and to help you diversify your language in terms of technical writing. Thank you very much.